Jeremy Monette with Sonics Aircraft. We're standing in front of your latest offering. It's called the One X. Tell us about it. Yeah, it's uh, really, when we started with it, it's a clean sheet design from our company, Sonics Aircraft. It's really an 85% Sonics. And the most common question we've been getting, this is its official debut. It was a pile of parts about six weeks ago, and it's been engineered over the long Wisconsin winter. And really, the main reason we did it is uh, to show we can do a single place aircraft first off. And the primary design feature is the folding wings. And I'll talk a lot about that and actually give you a demonstration of it. But to get back to why we did it, a single place aircraft, there's really only one way you can operate an aircraft for lower cost than our two place Sonics aircraft, which started about 26,000 bucks complete with engine and kit and everything. Um, and that's to go a little bit smaller. So what we're looking at behind us is an aircraft that has fewer parts than a Sonics, a little simpler gear configuration or lower cost gear configuration at least. And we're able to take and cut some of those costs out so we have an aircraft that we can build for in the twenty to $22,000 range and operate as a uh, fully aerobatic sport pilot compliant plane. What kind of interest are you getting in it? Who's looking at the airplane? Tremendous amount of interest. We're getting it from anybody who basically is already familiar with our product line, the Sonics, YX, and Xenos people who are looking at kind of the latest offering, uh, all the way to general aviation pilots. And where I see this as the market niche is somebody who already has maybe a Cirrus or a Cessna or a Piper, already has a production aircraft for their cross countries, and maybe they're looking for something to uh, have a little fun in. A little single place aircraft that's affordable with the folding wing, they might be able to store it in the same hangar or put a couple of them in their same hangar as a general air aviation aircraft. And again, have that super fun mission. You said six weeks ago it was a pilot parts on the floor. When do you start flight testing and what kind of flight characteristics do you think this airplane is going to have? Great question. Uh, we want to get this done as soon as possible. Uh, it, it, and, and as all home builders know, there's a big difference between getting a project to the point where it looks like it's ready to fly and then actually getting it ready to fly. But this will be my primary focus in the next few months. Uh, I'm hoping to have it flying as soon as possible, perhaps by the end of the year, if not maybe shortly into 20, 2011. But the bottom line is nobody's more motivated than me to get it out there so it's product level and we can start uh, selling it and making some money. There's not a lot of unknowns with this aircraft. As we said, we kind of took the Sonics with a known handling, a known airfoil, scaled it down to that 85%. It's actually a, a 50 inch cord and has 78 square feet of wing area. So that's all part of being sport pilot. But the airfoil is exactly the same as the Sonics, a 64A415. Uh, so we have a known airfoil, a known tail config. Everything's about the same distance apart. So I really don't expect any surprises. And we've got the perfect little trainer. If you're looking at building and flying a 1X, we have the perfect little trainer in our Sonics. What engine are you putting in it? Yeah, the Aero VOB standard, and you can see it behind us here with the uh, rocker box cover sticking out the side. Those are very recognizable to anybody that's known VW aircraft conversions. Uh, little known fact, or I guess it's a more widely known fact now, is that Sonics Aircraft is not just an airframe company, we're also an engine company. So we also sell and support our own Aero V product line, which is based on those aftermarket high performance racing parts. You can put one together for about $6,500 complete, uh, add exhaust and a couple of other uh, wiring components and you have yourself a really nice firewall forward package. And we're not talking about using junkyard engines. I want to make that clear. A lot of people think they hear VW and no, we actually use all zero time brand new racing components. So, but you know, the Aero V, what could be a more perfect fit for an affordable airplane than an affordable engine? So that's really where the marriage, marriage works. How difficult was it to engineer the folding wing? Uh, very difficult. In fact, that was the only real design challenge of this aircraft. I mean, designing an aircraft from a blank sheet of paper is obviously a gigantic challenge in and of itself. But really where I spent most of the time is designing and engineering this wing fold, which I'll demonstrate for you in a moment, which uh, keep the park count down, make sure that it's still fully aerobatic, just like it should. And my design criteria was to make sure that it was no wider than something that could be uh, legally trailered. So that's eight and a half feet wide. So you can be pulled up on a flatbed or just towed behind your car or se seven feet tall, which is basically what your standard garage door is. All right, we're going to do a demonstration of the 1X wing fold. 
Really, the only parts you have to worry about is this handle mechanism. It's a single handle with an indicator on the top of the wing. We can see the indicator here is flush with the top of the wing, which means that it is in the locked position. We can go fly. So as a pilot, you'll always see that indicator. So to uh, release that mechanism, we're going to reach underneath the wing. We're going to pull a safety pin and pull the handle towards us. Then we're going to walk to the wingtip and lift the wing up into position. So watch it. So now that it's uh, in position, we can just show you some of the features here. Basically, you can see the handle, which sticks out the bottom, and that's part of the indicator. And now the indicator is up, telling us, dude, don't fly. It's not in the lock position. And this is one of the other big design features, the aileron uh, paddles. And this is uh, basically you don't have to do any disconnecting or adjustment. It's an automatic mechanism so that this paddle on the outboard side of the wing that operates the aileron, and you can see it moving at the root of the wing, um, will interface with this portion, which runs right back into the cockpit to the control stick. So that's all you really have to worry about. Aero TV is brought to you by. If you own a Cirrus today, or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value.